Uh, I'm Jonathan Grenard, I'm from Hiram, Georgia, small town, uh, about 20 minutes north of Atlanta. Um, youngest of three, uh, I got an older brother and older sister. I played football since I was four years old. Um, currently now I'm a redshirt junior on the football field and a senior in the classroom and also I'm chapter president of my fraternity. Growing up, I lived in a two-parent house. Um, my father and my mother, they divorced when I was younger in about third grade. Uh, that was a pretty tough transition, but uh, I overcame it just, you know, steady, staying with football, I always kept in contact with him. Uh, the relationship between me and him was really good, uh, actually great. And then um, played football all the way up until I mean, high school as well, even starting from four years old all the way until now, continuing to play. In my junior year of high school, my father passed away. Uh, he was, it was very tough. I mean, that was one of the worst days of my life. Uh, still remember to this day, you know, you, your heart stops when something like that happens. You know, you go through something like that and you see everyone else that it happens to in the past. You're like, oh, I'm sorry, I feel bad for them. But until it happens to you, you really don't actually know, like, how you're going to deal with stuff. You don't know how you're going to be able to continue going through life when football has been your whole life. And, you know, they, he's taught it to you from since day one. About a week or two after my father passed, I got my first football off. And eventually those offers just started flowing in. And it was definitely overwhelming to see all that happen because I went from me saying to myself, I'm not going to be able to play college football because I uh, lost my father. And now I got here and, you know, that's when I met Chris. And uh, Chris was Chris was definitely a person who I can honestly call him at 3 o'clock in the morning. He'll be right there for whatever I need. It's a tough situation, but the fact that he kept me going and I stayed playing football and staying going to church, staying in my, my schoolwork and everything else to keep pushing me to be better and be great, to make better decisions so that way I don't end up cutting my life short like my father did. My father was only 52 years old. You know, when I first came up here, I was still kind of down in spirit because not only am I away from home, but now I'm away from home and I lost my father. And I'm playing on the big stage now that he wasn't able to see. So when Chris was able, you know, to talk to me every single day to make sure I'm still staying on top of everything from school, just to stand focused and stand in my studies and, and working out, you know, just talking to my mother all the time. I was growing up in a family household where race wasn't a thing. We, we all love whoever, what color, black, white, green, whatever you want to call it. We love everyone, and the fact that I come to a place like this and we got a person like Chris who doesn't see any of that and treats everybody the same like we're his own kids, is just, you can't ask for a better situation. You know, he instilled in me how to be a man, you know, take responsibility for stuff, to use my platform to, to the most because there's plenty of people out there in the world that would love to be in my shoes, and I understand that every day. I have a friend back home uh, who's uh, autistic, uh, Ryan, Ryan Tumlin. I see him, I talk to him every day, almost every other day if I can. Just being able to talk to him, you know, seeing someone who wishes they could play the game, but they're just physically not able to, it just made you realize how much you really have it, how good you have it, and what God has given you. He almost lost his life when I was a senior in high school, and he nearly drowned in the pool from having a seizure. And that day, we all thought we were going to lose him. I thought I was going to lose him. I ended up going to the hospital. I was crying. I was like, man, it was, I thought it was all over. But for him to keep pushing, and now he's still alive to this day, things like that, you have to, very, you have to value and cherish those things because and not every once, like I said before, not everybody has it like you. Without FCA or Chris Morgan, I don't, I don't know how close I would be with God right now. This is the closest I've ever been to God, you know. So it's, it's just seeing Him and realizing what He's done for me. I don't even know where I would be. And for FCA and Chris Morgan to lead me closer and to learn more about God and His Word, it's just been overwhelming, and I can't thank Him enough.